Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're back on our 6040 CNC. Um, I've got a lot of research that I've been doing over the last couple of weeks trying to find out what recipes work. Uh, as you all know, the 6040 is really bad about um, the gantry flexing, and that's going to be an upgrade later on down the road. But for right now, I had to find out what tools would work best on like cutting aluminum. Um, cutting the wood is not a problem on the machine. I know that the weak point is that. Um, the biggest upgrade is the table. Get you a nice surface uh, plate. Um, but for right now, we're just going to talk about tooling. So when I first got the machine, I went out and I bought a ton of all kind of different end mills. You know, I've got I've got some. These are for like uh, fiberglass uh, or you know, composites. And I've got, oh, I don't know. There's a, a ball nose and some you know one millimeter end mills all these are uncoated just regular ebay end mills um but let me show you right here for instance uh so this is one of the ebay end mills that i bought <clears throat> and so um spiral milling cutter 3.17 basically an eighth inch uh two flute end mill and they cut okay, and for the longest time I kept wondering what I was doing wrong. And when I finally changed end mills, I decided that it was really these that was causing a problem. And I've decided that these work best uh, if you cut them on plastic. Um, these don't, don't really seem to work really that good for aluminum. They will cut aluminum, um, but they work better on like plastics. So this is the 1 16th version of that. I don't have a number on these. So I've retired these, all the other stuff that I have that's non-coated stuff, I'll just use that for wood and plastics. And when it comes to metal cutting, I've been using three flute end mills, and we'll talk about the one fluters here in just a minute. <clears throat> so the three fluters, so I have a quarter inch, this one's from Online Carbide, so it's the ZRN coated three flute quarter inch end mill. Um... This thing is great. The coating works good. The aluminum doesn't clog in, in there, um, providing that you're cutting smart with it. If you're not, if you start rubbing, then you'll clog it. Um, this is the eight inch three fluter. The only time I've ever clogged these is I clog it right on the very end there. You know when I'm slotting, adaptive and everything. I've never clogged these, and I I, I run these dry. So I want to make sure I try to find a recipe where I run them, the cuts dry or if it, anything just a real light coated WD-40 but not just making a mess because here the machine's mounted on plywood. I don't want to run flood cooling or anything on the machine. So my important mission is to figure out how to cut aluminum and dry on this machine. So anyway, this is the 1 8 3 fluter which is... This guy right here, online carbide, this is one of the more, more affordable end mills that I've run on this machine and had no issues at all. And the recipe I had for that is right here. It's a 8 inch 3 flute, 12,500 RPM, uh, 400 surface foot, feed per tooth, almost one. I could bump that, that feed rate up where the... Cutting is 30 inches a minute. I could probably go to 35 and get that up to one. So the depth of cut, 30 thou, optimal load, 30 thou. That's the step over. lubricant air blast um winston mori from uh carbide 3d he listed a an aquarium pump and i'll show it here in just a second and i run that now i used to run my air compressor in here but since he told me about that trick that is wonderful it puts just enough air out to clear the chips and you don't have to hear the compressor kicking off and on i think i got it off of amazon 
and uh, I don't remember how much it cost. I was thinking it was like 50 bucks, but it, anyhow, it provides plenty of air blast to blow the chips away, and you don't have to have your air compressor kicking off and on. This has been <laughs> this has been one of the best things I've ever done because I hated hearing that compressor kicking off and on. So now for finishing. Um, I don't think I found the uh, the one sixteenth at Online Carbide, or either I found this one. This one's a HTC tool, another eBay buy, but uh, this one's this one's cuts just as well as the one eight three fluter. So this is what it looks like. It's got an eighth inch depth of cut, three flutes, ZR encoded, so it's it's not gonna the aluminum's gonna not want to stick to it. So that's the number. <clears throat> Was it 1021-0625-125-ZRN? Uh, so you can search that on on eBay, and uh, that's a really good bit. So these ended up being my workhorse bits that I really really like cutting aluminum with. I can I can feel feel pretty confident with these bits. So <clears throat> why did I go with Nomad tools? Well. After watching Winston, he really talks about the one fluter and how hard they are to clog. So I've never run these bits. I've got a job to run today. And so I ordered these bits. And I said, you know what? We'll try them out. So if you watch Winston's videos, a lot of the, this, the 274Z is one of the workhorses he always uses. And then on his larger machine, the 278Z. So these are the two bits that I see him using most. And I think he did his longboard with this one here. And uh, all that aluminum he cut, he never had a clog. He wasn't standing over it, spraying it with WD-40 all day long. So I'm going to try these out and uh, let you guys know, you know, how I like them. So that's kind of, that's my research there. So now moving on to the tools that I use with the 6040. So there's my... Workhorses that I've been using, ZRN coated on aluminum, love it. This is ZRN coated. These here, we'll we'll put these away. This is for plastics and and what. I've actually got another bit here. It's a one fluter. This is basically for like acrylic. Um, if I can get it out and show you. So this one's a one fluter with a spiral point, so it can bury in. So that's supposed to be for acrylic. And you got to run those really, really fast. High feed rates. I mean, 60, 80 inches a minute. All right. <clears throat> so you guys have seen in the past on my videos where I run the drag bit. So this is spring-loaded drag bit. It's got a diamond tip on it. And I've got several different angles. I think I've got a 120. And I keep replacement tips. Because sometimes I end up stupid and I end up breaking this thing off. And when you're doing, you know, two, three hundred dog tags, you know, you can't just stop and have to order a bit and wait a week for it to get here. So I've got three or four of these. Um, the whole tool is about 50 bucks. The replacement tip's 25 bucks. Um, not too bad. Um, I've experimented around. I buried the set screw in there to try to get as much spring tension as I can on it. So, but for the most part, it comes with the set screw all the way at the top. So the spring's really light. When I use this guy... I'll probably bury it 80 thou, maybe 100 thou. I don't want to go bury it a whole bunch because then you need to go into fusion and set your retract right, your retract height. Because I made the mistake of saying, oh, I'll bury it 200 thou. And I did that and it come up 200 thou and it was still spring loaded. And when it went to move over, it ruined my part. So be careful when you use these. Now, one other thing now, <clears throat> you do not turn the spindle when you're running this. You, I set my spindle RPM to like 1, and it doesn't even turn on. Now I think Fusion will allow you to do 0 RPM. You, it used to flag an error, so you had to do 1 RPM to make it not work. The next, this is the last one I want to talk about in the video. I'm going to do a whole video probably just on this guy here. I've had this for God, 6 or 8 months. CNCA.com. I don't get any kickback from from them but let me tell you that this is probably the neatest tool I've ever bought I don't remember how much I paid for it maybe it's 100 bucks 150 bucks for the whole kit maybe um, but what's unique about it is it is spring-loaded 
and they give you different springs so you can change your tensions and an extra set screw then you get different bits and it does it is it is spring loaded so what's really neat about this is if I'm turning this in the direction that it cuts obviously you know it locks but you see no way to change the bit if you turn it opposite and pull it, the bit comes right out so it's got like a sprag or a little clutch in there and to change bits push it in turn it left and push in now it's spring loaded and it's locked it's brilliant this is a very very smart design so if you have like a dome shape that you don't have completely plotted out right and you need to cut something on it you can fudge a little bit you can like preload this guy 10 thou and it'll follow that dome it, it works really really good so anyway later video coming on this guy here I've actually got some radiator caps that I'm machining putting some artwork on and uh, so whenever I go to do that video that's when you'll see this thing working so anyway I want to wrap up the video pretty soon um, I want to show you the air pump but before I get too far ahead I showed you the 8 inch 3 flute let me talk about the 8 the 1 16th 3 flute which is this little guy right here <clears throat> so I've cut I was running 16,000 RPM, but I went to 19,000 because uh, the notes here said the higher RPM uh, helped the aggressive sound. It just didn't sound right when it was taken by it. So I wasn't brave enough to go to the 400 surface foot. So 260 is about where I'm at. Feed per tooth 0004. Not quite, I mean, not even a half. Well, anyway. So this is my lead in, lead out 15 inches per minute. The depth of cut 10 thou. Optimal load 12 thou and uh, no lubricant and air blast, the 950 GPH. So, um, see, looking at the notes here, um, max 20 thousandths depth of cut, uh, 10 thousandths optimal load. I think I was playing around with this, uh, 12 thousand inches per minute. Is good 15 is edgy it just sounds like it's it could break at any minute so I think this is when I maxed it out these are my notes when I was testing it so anyway these two tools here have done me done me really good in the past I've done a lot of projects with these so let me show you let me get you off the tripod here this is the air blast right here it's the little aquarium pump deal this thing has worked wonderful. I've got a little manifold on it, <clears throat> just in case I wanted to split it off, but I think I can just put it straight in. So this this little rubber hose goes all the way up, all the way around the little tractor feed, and comes around to here, and it provides just enough air blast to clear the chips, and I don't have to worry about the compressor kicking off and on. Well, I guess that's about it. I'm going to close the video down. We're almost 13 minutes now. and uh, So, if there's any comments, questions, suggestions, anything, uh, put them down below and let me read those. Let's get a little discussion started. But, hey, um, if there's anything that uh, <clears throat> that's helped you on these videos, then give it a thumbs up and uh, share the videos with your friends and kind of help spread the word. The 6040 machines are great. Um, they need a little TLC, a little work on them. Uh, the electronics and the steppers are crap, but if you upgrade that, it's a nice little machine. I've cut a lot of stuff on it. So anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, please hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Thanks for watching.